uh, what we are going to do next uh, 11 12 minutes is we are going to watch these two videos wherein we will get a feel of why we require a version control system what exactly it, its role in the development of the code okay code development may what is the role of version control system that we are going to look at so i want you to put your attention to the uh, thing which i'm i'm showing you as one of the youtube video it's a 2 minute video it's not a long video so you can easily understand what is going around in that okay and there is a 9 minute video wherein from a perspective of a web developer uh, how exactly a uh, software like git that is git saves you uh, from lot of troubles that you have okay so these two videos are interesting and they are part of some series of videos which i am going to sh uh, share through the chat window as well so i'm going to stop talking for a moment i want you to listen to this uh, particular video okay so i hope the entire screen is visible uh, let me know the audio is also uh, available the version control system a you are able to system uh, or vcs is a system that the allows you to manage well. Just comment in the chat box quickly. Yeah, thank you. So I'll just run the run it. Thank you. Multiple revisions of the same unit of is a version control system. A version control system or VCS is a system that allows you to manage multiple revisions of the same unit of information. For example, of documents, of source files, or any other item of that sort. And as the graphical depiction shows, a VCS allows multiple actors, here we have four, to cooperate and share files. Now let's drill into this concept in a little more detail. And let's do that by discussing why is VCS useful, especially in the context of software engineering and of software development. So first of all, using a version control system enforces discipline because it manages the process by which the control of items passes from one person to another. Another important aspect of VCS is that it allows you for archiving versions so you can store subsequent versions of source control items into a VCS. And not only you can store versions, you can also maintain a lot of interesting and important historical information about these versions. For example, a VCL will store information such as who is the author for the specific version stored in the system or for another example on what day and at what time that version was stored and a lot of other interesting information about the specific version of the item information that you can then retrieve and for example use to compare versions. Obviously, the fact of having a central repository in which all these items are stored enables collaboration so people can more easily share data share files, share documents through the use of VCS. And I'm sure that you all had the experience of deleting a file by mistake or modifying a file in the wrong way or in the most common case of changing something in your code, for instance, and breaking something and not being able to go back to a version that was working, not remembering, for example, what is that you changed that broke the code. In all these cases, a version control system can be extremely useful because it will allow you to recover from these accidental deletions or edits. And for example, to go back of yesterday's version that was working perfectly. And also to compare, for example, yesterday's version with today's version and see what is that you changed. Finally, a version control system will normally also allow you to conserve and save this space on both the source control client and on the server. Why? Well, for instance, because it's centralizing the management of versions. So instead of having many copies spread around, you will have only one central point where these copies are stored or a few points where these copies are stored. In addition, a version control system often uses efficient algorithms to store these changes. And therefore, it can keep many versions without taking up too much space. So obviously the video was uh, very much uh, straightforward in telling you the benefits of using version control systems. Now we are going to learn about how in a web developer workflow the version control system would be used. Okay, so uh, this is actually a uh, three four videos uh, together. We'll be only seeing this one video. The rest of the things I want you to go through and learn on your own. Why I'm showing you this video is because this semester you are going to do a project mini project based on your 
internet programming syllabus and since you are learning software engineering devops and as well as simultaneously learning about uh, the internet programming and doing a project in internet programming this will be beneficial to you to understand how you can utilize the concept from devops that you are learning in practically creating a project that you are working on okay so that's why we are actually looking at this particular 9 minutes video so we'll briefly see this video and then we'll move ahead with actually understanding the git software this section of the course we will hello everyone in this section of the course we will learn about git let's begin with a few questions so in this first lesson here is what we are going to answer together number 1 What is Git? Number two, why should we learn Git? And number three, where do we begin? So we are going to answer all three of these one by one. Let's begin with what is Git. Git is the world's most popular version control system, uh, but that phrase is just empty words. So instead, let's talk about what does Git do? Why is Git so useful? And why do so many people love Git? So really, Git just helps us. manage our projects files now a project could be anything let's imagine that we are building a website so our project would have all kinds of files it would have html files css files javascript files images you get the idea you've got a whole lot of files now the question becomes what does git do that makes managing our files easier and the biggest one that i want to talk about first is history So history just means that Git keeps track of every change we make to our project. Here's an example of why that's amazing. Let's imagine that we adjust the CSS on a website. Maybe we delete a few styles and add a few new styles. We think that everything's great, but a month later we discover that our code changes broke the layout on a few pages. Now instead of scratching our heads and trying to remember what code we adjusted a month ago and involving a bit of guesswork, Instead we can have git tell us exactly on which day we changed which files and it will even show us which lines of code we added and which lines of code we removed. So this is great. This means you can rest a little easier at night now knowing that git has got your back. If you need to revert changes, you can. If you want to look back and see how a file has evolved over the past year, you can. Nothing is ever lost or nothing is ever final thanks to git's history. basically what we are saying here is uh, uh, we can actually know how a file got evolved that how a code got evolved from where it was early when we started developing the code and when it reached to a point of the development where we are satisfied about the code so it can also show you the learning curve that your team got through while doing the coding stuff apart from Uh, maintaining the history and being able to recover from the problems and bugs it can also give you an understanding about the whole life cycle of coding that you are you and your team followed in order to generate a particular body of code okay so that's a thing that i wanted to add that's why i uh we will continue the video now okay so let's move on to the next reason that people love git and that is collaboration Now, if you've ever tried to create something on the computer with a group of people or a team of people, you know that a common concern is trying to avoid accidentally deleting or overwriting each other's progress. To illustrate this, let's look at collaboration without Git in the picture. So, a quick example would be: uh, Let's imagine we're writing a book and we finished the first one and a half chapters, and we send an email to our friend. Uh, with a word processing file attached and we say hey buddy here's the first chapter and a half do you mind maybe making a few edits and finishing the second chapter for me and then sending the attachment back to me now the moment you send that email you are frozen you are stuck you can no longer so this is the very much what we do now uh, nowadays when we are working from remotely on projects right one person does a project work and sends that file over from a mail or through us a uh, collaborative uh, environment like a, a drive folder and when the other person is working on the folder 
the first person is not doing anything he is waiting for the other person to complete his work and then only he can join and start working on it so that would be the way the collaboration would work if we do not have the software like a version control system software like longer work on the book yourself until your friend emails you back with the updated book file why why is that well, it's because you want to make sure that you aren't stepping on each other's toes. So let's imagine that you did make a few edits right after sending that email. What if you edited the first paragraph and maybe fixed a few typos in the last paragraph? Well, that would mean that your friend then wasn't working with the most updated copy of the book. So then when they send the file back to you, both of your copies are out of date. So you would almost have to ask your friend to manually step-by-step -step summarize what exactly they changed. You'd have to say, hey buddy, can you list out the specific changes you made so I can kind of replay those changes to my updated copy? And when you do that, your friend will probably reply by saying, no, I will not do that for you, get lost, right? Your friend will be frustrated. They don't want to go through and recap every single change they made. Uh, and you're frustrated because now you would have to go through both files word by word and sort of compare them <laughs> and see what changed in either copy and mush them together uh, yourself. So no matter how it's sliced, one of you is going to have to do a bit of tedious, miserable work <laughs> of sort of combing through things and merging them together. Now that process of tracking the changes and comparing and merging is exactly what Git does for us. So that example was just a long-winded way of saying that Git makes collaboration very easy and it allows you to be more productive when working in a team. You don't need to sit around waiting for someone else to make their changes. You can continue working on your changes and rest assured that when it comes time to sort of merge everyone's changes together so that everyone has the most updated copy of the files, Git has got your back. Git will take care of merging any conflicts. Git will take care of now let's go over huh? one final reason why I think people love Git so much, and that is something called feature branches. Okay, so what in the world is a feature branch? What does that mean? What is a branch? Well, the best way to explain that is to look at an example. So, so let's, let's imagine, imagine that we have an existing, an existing website, website that, that we are responsible for editing, editing updating, updating, and making improvements, improvements to. to. And let's, let's imagine, imagine that we were just, just assigned two tasks. Two tasks. Number, Number one, one we, we need to redesign, redesign the, the header, header of the website. Of the website. Maybe, Maybe add a new logo, logo change, change the slogan, change, change the colors. colors. And, and task, task number two, two we, need we need to adjust, adjust the styling, styling and, and ordering, ordering of, the of the links in the, in the footer. footer. Okay, okay, so, so how, how would things, things play out if we were not using Git? It would probably look something like this. Day, Day one, one, we get, we get started, started on both, both tasks, tasks, but we don't, we don't complete either task, either so we can't go live with our changes. changes. Day, Day two, two rolls around, and we continue, continue working on both tasks. tasks. By the by end of the day, we actually, actually finish, finish the footer, the footer changes. changes. But our, our header, header is nowhere near complete. complete. So, so now, now we're in this weird position where we wish we could go live with the updated footer, but we can't because our code is all lumped together. And if, and we, if uploaded we uploaded the files, files to the live website, website right now, now the, footer the footer would look great, great but the header, the header would look broken. And we, and we might not finish the header for another, another week. week. Okay, and, and you, you never, never want one piece of your code holding, holding another, another, piece another piece of your code, code hostage. hostage. So clearly, so clearly this, this is not, not the most productive, productive or efficient, efficient workflow. workflow. Now, now instead, instead, let's look at the Git way of doing things. The Git way of implementing multiple tasks for features. All right, if we were using Git and we were just assigned the header and footer tasks, here's how it would look. Let's think of our project as a tree. We want to create two new branches, one for each task. So we'd create one branch and name it header changes, and we would create another new branch and name it footer changes. When we feel like working on the header, we check out the header changes branch. When we make any changes related to the footer, we check out the footer changes branch. We can hop back and forth between these. So here the word checkout means we are only getting the code, which is the base code of the tree plus the code wherein some portion of header changes have been made. Some changes in the header changes portion is made. So that is called a checkout. If you do not know what is checkout, I'm just telling you. These two branches, or between these two versions of our project, throughout the day. Git tracks the branches separately from one another. So it is not a big deal if we finish one feature first. So let's say we finish the footer changes. 
and we are ready to go live with them, all we do is we take that branch, that footer changes branch, and we just fold it back up into our tree, or we merge it into the tree. Maybe a week later or even a month later, we finish the header redesign. Whenever that time comes, we just fold that branch back up into the tree as well. And that is feature branches in a nutshell. Okay, so we've answered the question, what is Git? We know that Git helps us manage our files. Git basically tracks changes, which does three big things for us. It gives us history. It makes it easy to collaborate with other people. And it makes it easy to work on multiple features at once. Moving on to the next question, why should we learn Git? I can't think of a single reason not to learn Git. Every job I've had in the last five years, I've used Git every single day. In the developer world, it's just sort of assumed that you know Git. So whether you want to become more attractive to employers or you want to fly solo but bring a bit of structure and organization to your code, learning Git is truly a must. Which brings us to where do we begin? Well, the good news is you've already begun. You've made, you've it, made through it through this, this lesson, lesson, which means you know, you know what, what Git is in the first place and what it, what does, it does for us. us. The next, next step, step is to see Git, Git in action. action. And, that and that is exactly, exactly what we are going to do in the next, next lesson. lesson. I will share, share my screen. screen. I will walk, walk through, through the basic steps, steps of actually, quote, using Git. Git. We can see some of its features come to life. We can get our get feet our wet together. together. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'll... Okay, now hope you have uh, a bit, fair bit of idea about what exactly is the Git. And now what I'm going to do in the rest of 15 minutes is give you a very crude walkthrough of the Git. Okay. 